On the workbench here is my latest project. This is a Norwegian Model 1912 Krag Jorgensen carbine. It uh, came to me as a sporting rifle. Here I'll insert a picture of the uh, what it looked like when it came to me, followed by what this model is supposed to look like, which is the eventual goal of this project, is to get it back to the original military configuration. Luckily parts are available, so I was able to find this right here being the nose cap. And then also able to find this uh, middle band right here. Now the stock is another story. Had to start with a eight quarter piece of walnut from the local hardwood supply store. I'm documenting this project a little bit late since I already have the inletting done and the stock roughly cut on the bandsaw. And I already have the nose cap fit here. This series will mostly be following making the stock since there's only a few metal parts to make. I think from here what I'll do is I'll work backwards and try to fit that middle band and then the midsection, the wrist, and eventually the butt. So the main thing to look for when starting a project like this is to know what you're getting into. Here, starting with a sporter, you need to know what has been done to it to get into that sporter configuration. Has the stock been cut down? It's the most common, of course. Is it missing metal bits from where the stock was cut down? Of course, that's also very common in the situation I'm in here. But also has irreparable damage been done to the metal parts so has the receiver here been drilled for uh, maybe a scope mount or something has the barrel been cut down has the rear sight base been removed you know those are things to look at that determines uh, just how much work you're gonna have to put into this this one none of those things have taken place so the metal here is all original, which is great, because that just means that I need to replace parts and rebuild a stock. So the most important thing right off the bat is know what you're getting into. And then you can determine if uh, whatever repairs are needed are in your wheelhouse or not. This is the original stock that came with the rifle. You can see it was cut down right right around where the middle band is. But this is helpful to see how much I need to inlet. And the areas of the stock that have not been modified, such as the wrist and uh, the butt area, you know, that gives you target dimensions to hit on your new stock. The forend has been sanded quite a bit, as you can see from the grasping grooves, all the corners and edges are rounded over pretty well. So I'll need to make that a little bit thicker than is here on the sporting stock. And then here, I'm on my own as far as the nose cap goes. When selecting wood for the project, you want to start with uh, you know something that you're going to be able to fit all your dimensions into. So usually eight quarter lumber is what you want to get. That's uh, two inches thick. And also you want to look at the grain direction. So you want straight grain for a stock like this, a military stock. They're not fancy like you would find most gun stock blanks are. It doesn't have curly grain to it or any fancy figure, just as straight of a grain as possible. And you can see here this rod is representing the angle that the grain runs on, so it's going to provide a lot of strength running this angle to transmit the recoil from the action down through the thick part of the wrist and into the butt plate. On the workbench here are the majority of the tools used to complete the inletting of the action. The tool on the left is a plunge router. That does uh, really the bulk of the waste removal. 
I have different various bits that I use. Those uh, round cove bits are used to complete the barrel channel and some of the co curved surfaces on the bottom of the receiver. And then for everything that's not curved, pretty much primarily use this quarter inch uh, two flute carbide uh, spiral router bit to remove all that waste. Everything's cleaned up and edges are squared with these chisels. The barrel shank is tapered, so that's where this curved gouge comes in handy to uh, sort of smooth out the edges in between where I step up to the larger cove bits. This might seem a little funny, but the lipstick is used to coat the bottom of the action in this uh, hot pink color, and when the action is placed in the stock, the lipstick will transfer where it's rubbing to the, uh, the inletting done on the stock, so that tells you where you need to remove material and where it's touching and fully seated once you get down to, to full depth. Uh, sandpaper wrapped around a, just a scrap piece of steel here to smooth out the barrel channel after using this tool. That's really all there is to it, just go slow. I've probably had the action in and out of the stock probably 50 to 100 times so far, just uh, you know, testing the fit, moving a little bit of material, repeating the whole process over again. Here you can see the inletting job without the action. Hopefully that looks pretty similar to the sporter stack. Of course the, the sides of it are still oversized. Now you can see this black here, that's a uh, acker glass gel from Brownells. And it's applied to uh, the recoil bearing surfaces, which on a Norwegian crag and Danish crag too. It's uh, just this rear tang area. I also applied it to wherever the three action screws go, which is one back here, one in the middle, right in front of the trigger guard, and then one up front. I also just applied a little bit here to uh, the chamber area of the barrel. Actually, that's the front bearing surface of the receiver. This is the chamber area of the barrel, which you can see from a little bit darker color there, it's actually a really good fit. It's been rubbing. That whole that whole area has been rubbing. So just uh, get those three areas uh, you know, nice and flat and made it up perfectly to the action. And hopefully this will bear recoil and hold itself together very well. This tool is called a spoke shave, and it's what I use to do the majority of the uh, stock shaping on the outside. Just a single blade with a very narrow sole, similar to a hand plane, except it's used to pull towards you to remove the material. The thin sole lets it uh, go around curves. So it's used like this. Let me just do a little bit on the corner of the hand guard here. Press down and pull back. Now there's a lot of material here to remove because uh, you know it's very oversized right now. So what I'll usually do is I'll trim it on the bandsaw to roughly the shape that I want, and then uh, work it here with the spoke shave, get it to final dimension, and you know, establish these rounded over edges like. Are required on the hand guard here. It's always good to do a little bit, stop, and uh, check your progress along the way. It's also important to note the uh, grain direction here. So I'm pulling backwards in this area and it's giving 
nice chips, smooth finish. Um, if I were to go the opposite way, it's tearing out a little bit right in here. So that's very important once you get to the close to the final dimension is that you really want to avoid the tear out. So I'll need to keep this in mind that this area I'm pulling backwards to avoid the tear out. Tear out could bring you down past your final dimension if you're trying to get rid of the tear out, the, the ugly look of the grain being pulled away. So just keep going like that, eventually you'll get there. 